Welcome to Corinth, Wanderer. I have a special visit planned for you today. It's an intimate, informative look into the daily lives of Greek women. My name is Aspasia. Though I am not originally from Athens, I have climbed to the top of its social ladder using my wit and intellect. I've even earned the love of Pericles, one of the most powerful men in the city. The mind truly is a beautiful thing. It's amazing what women could accomplish while men spend all day trying to out-debate each other at assembly meetings. Their work should be far more appreciated on the whole, but we're going to acknowledge that now. Corinth was one of the largest cities in ancient Greece. It had an estimated population of 90,000 in my times, and much of that population was made up of women. This tour will shine a light on those women and look at how they lived on a day-to-day -day basis. Look for me when you're done with your visit, and we can discuss things further. Young girls growing up in ancient Greek cities were usually raised by a nurse. They mostly stayed in the women's quarters of the house, the gunaikon, where they spent their time spinning threads and weaving. While there is not much historical evidence of young girls at play, especially compared to boys, it was still known to happen. For example, an ancient terracotta group depicts two girls playing ephedrismos, this was a competition to see who could strike an upright rock from afar using a pebble or ball. The game's loser had to close their eyes and carry the victor until they managed to touch the same rock with their hands. For a young Greek woman, marriage was the culmination of their induction into society. The average life expectancy for women was about 40 years, so most marriages took place when the bride was 14 or 15 years old. The marriage did not require her consent either. Instead, she was passed on from the protection of her father to that of her husband. Married women were not technically citizens at the time, and lacked the rights that came with official citizenship. However, they did receive a dowry that only they were allowed to spend. But in the event of a failed marriage, the dowry was returned to the bride's father. After the marriage was consummated, the woman's status changed from being a maiden to a bride. She remained a bride until the birth of her first child, wherein she officially became a woman.
Women living in ancient Greek cities were essentially forbidden from participating in political life, and most aspects of their lives were controlled by men. Their most important responsibilities were running the household and giving birth to children, preferably boys. Most of the time, women's excursions outside of the house were limited to visiting other female neighbors, as per custom. The few exceptions to this strict rule were weddings, funerals, and religious festivals involving women in prominent public roles. Making textiles was the main occupation of most Greek women. It was a woman's responsibility to manufacture clothing for each of her family members, as well as to weave other household textiles. Women with exceptional weaving skills were believed to make excellent wives, and weaving in general was seen as a very attractive quality. For example, Homer describes Odysseus's devoted wife Penelope as spending most of her days weaving at the loom. Similarly, many Greek vases depicting women weaving were combined with images of a woman holding a veil, which was seen as the symbol of a bride. Ancient Greek women cooked in their house's kitchen area. However, since their cooking equipment was small and portable, they also sometimes prepared meals in the central courtyard. This was also where women performed other domestic activities. These activities were rarely seen by visiting men or passers-by because the architecture of classical Greek houses facilitated the social norm that women should never be seen at work. The historian Strabo relays that the Temple of Aphrodite was one of Corinth's most famous landmarks. This was largely due to the temple's female patrons. These hetairai, as they were called, were donated to the goddess by both men and women. According to Strabo, the Temple of Aphrodite contributed greatly to Corinth's wealth. The hetairai were the temple's main attraction, and many visitors came to Corinth in search of their company for which they spent frequently and frivolously.
Hello again, Wanderer. I hope your visit was an interesting one. Greek women lived very restricted lives compared to men, but throughout it all, they held on to their strength and dignity. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Filling up for a test? Excellent! Let's begin with an easier question. What was the name of the women's quarters in a Greek home? The Andron was actually the men's section of a house where they held their symbosia. Try another answer. The Ireon was a temple dedicated to the goddess Ira. Try again. No, Yini was the status a woman achieved after the birth of her first child. Keep trying. Correct! The Yinekon was where young girls spent their days weaving and spinning threads. On to the next question. The Corinthian temple said to employ the Etera was dedicated to which god? Apollo did have a temple in Corinth, but it did not employ Etera. Try again. No, the temple was not dedicated to Athena. Try a different answer. <laughs> Artemis was the goddess of chastity, so dedicating the temple to her would have been ironic, don't you think? Keep trying. The Corinthian temple said to employ the Etera was dedicated to which god? Correct. Aphrodite was the goddess of love and passion, so it's only fitting her temple served such an amorous purpose. We're almost done. Just one more question. What was the name of Odysseus' wife? Clytemnestra was the wife of King Agamemnon of Mycenae. Try again. Helen was the wife of King Menelaos before Paris of Troy abducted her. Keep trying. Odysseus and Athena had a good relationship, as far as mortals and gods go, but they were not married. Try another answer. Yes, Penelope was Odysseus's loyal wife, who kept at her weaving while waiting for her husband to return from war. You passed the test, Wanderer. Congratulations. Then farewell, Wanderer, and thank you for visiting this great place.